here we go. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, everybody uh, joining to this uh, Google Summer of Code 2023 at Jenkins um, office hours. So uh, just a word of introduction. Welcome to everybody interested in participating in uh, Google Summer of Code. Uh, thank you to be part of this uh, great adventure. Just a little reminder, uh, this office hour will be held every week at this time, normally limited to half an hour. Uh, but uh, these weeks will have more uh, substantial meetings to answer questions and uh, to uh, give more details on projects. So we're not going to spend uh, too much time in general stuff. So I'll walk quickly uh, 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 through them. Uh, so first uh, important thing I'd like to share with everybody is that during this um, proposal time uh, where everybody is competing uh, by writing his proposal, uh, we want a fair treatment of everybody. And this means that we're not going to uh, engage in no mentor will engage in private discussions or answering private questions. Questions should be asked publicly and will be answered uh, publicly. It's not that we are ignoring you. I receive invites. Uh, I don't want to in, uh, ignore you at all, but uh, some rules that we need to, to follow. So in the same vein, all activities are public. Important is also the way we work in open source. No secrets, no little uh, corner uh, discussions in cabals. So no, no, we work publicly. Um, don't forget also to have a substantial proposal. You need to exercise your GSOC muscle. Important thing is that you, you do a pull requests and especially in the domain where you want to, uh, to apply, uh, you need to have a good understanding how it works and also show that at least uh, you can do the, the, the simple uh, things or that you know the, the grammar of how things work and that you know uh, how to do it. So please exercise. Don't forget, we'll have other Google Summer of Code. So if you can't make it this year, we'll have other uh, sessions. Um, once you have enough details and you know how things are, are going, that you, you know uh, how to start writing your proposal, do it without waiting. And experience has shown, and I strongly encourage you, uh, have your proposal reviewed by the community. It's a big step. You need to take a big breath and expose you, uh, expose yourself. I know it's, it's not easy, but it's part of the game. And uh, so uh, write it. We're not there to judge your work. We're there to help you improve it and help you progress. Do that exercise as soon as possible. You will have uh, the best proposal and the strongest one uh, to compete. The last point I would like to do before uh, getting to the hardcore uh, agenda of this meeting is that uh, this year, the are, there are a lot of people interested in uh, participating to Google Summer of Code. This is great. There's a lot of enthusiasm and energy and is very rewarding for everybody. I just want to warn uh, that we have only a limited capacity of mentoring 
uh, projects and uh, uh, this will make that we'll have to make decisions on how many projects we'll be able to field actually. Uh, there, will, there might be some reshuffling uh, of uh, the mentorship uh, and we're only going to choose the best proposal. So there is also the competition. This does, does not mean that you as a candidate are not good, are not worth it, or that uh, you should change career directions or, or things like that, not at all. It's at this stage, it didn't work out. Uh, I'm open for discussions when the selection has been done to give personal advice to people and guide them uh, how they can prepare uh, even better and use the time to learn about open source and uh, uh, get more up to speed uh, and have a better chance to, to participate to Google Summer Code. It would not be fun for me or us as org admins to have to tell people here, you, you had a great proposal, but we had to choose and you didn't make it. So I, I apologize in advance for that, but we're together uh, to, to build. And there will be great opportunities to continue help and learning and, uh, and having other opportunities. This said, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, three project ideas, uh, one being the plugin installation manager tool. The second one uh, will be about uh, building Jenkins.io with different or better tools. And the third one being screenshot uh, automation for Jenkins documentation. So before we start, I just would like uh, the mentors that are online in these meetings, either for these three projects or eventually for other projects, uh, to step forward, say a word, uh, and uh, present. So I'm going to pick and then, uh, because I, I don't remember uh, all the names, I know uh, Mark Waite, who will be mentoring so he's, he's available to mentor one project and he's interested in several. So can you present yourself in a couple of words? Sure, I'm Mark Waite. I'm the, Jen the maintainer of the Jenkins Git plugin. I'm a member of the Jenkins Governing Board. I've served in the past as Jenkins Documentation Officer. I'm part of the platform SIG. So I've got a lot of things that I, I find interesting in Jenkins, documentation, Jenkins Core, Git, and all those things mean that I've got far more ideas than I have time. And that means that I will, as John Mark said, mentor one project for Google Summer of Code, even though I've offered ideas for several. And I'm actually interested in even more than I have offered ideas for. Thanks, John Mark. Okay, thank you. Who else is mentoring? I see uh, Freyam. Yeah, um, hi, hi everyone. I'm Freyam, and I will be entering the plugin installation project. Uh, I'm actually I, I'm actually here just to give like you know guidance to all the new upcoming uh, open source contributors because I feel that I have a lot to share here. I have a lot to share from my past two I mean past years of experience in open source in Google Summer of Code specifically. So I'm just here to like learn and at the and at the same time also teach others the ways of you know open source. This is like fun for me. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Freyam. Uh, Bruno is yeah. org admin and also is a potential mentor. So can you org admin, uh, wannabe, uh, <laughs> Padawan, whatever. I'm just learning by uh, looking at how you proceed, Jean-Marc. And yes, uh, potentially I could be a mentor for the uh, mobile app uh, building with Jenkins subjects, uh, two of them, one for Android and one for Jenkins, uh, for iOS, of course. And I've been an open source enthusiast for <laughs> almost three decades now, um, but only started to work with Jenkins uh, less than a, a year ago. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do with um, the Google Summer of Code this year. Um, I've seen what you've done, what the other I've done the previous years, and it was amazing. And I think it will be even be better this year. 
Thank you, Jean-Marc. Okay, thank you. Now uh, you need to help me a little bit. I see Mustafa. Uh, Mustafa seems to have uh, connection issues. Uh, you're also offering to mentor. Hello. Hello, Mustafa. Hello. We hear you. Hello. How are you? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mustafa. I will uh, join this year um, in uh, screenshot automation for Jenkins documentation project. Uh, and I'm a software engineer. Uh, I have a lot, of, a lot of skills and I want to learn more. Uh, and I hope uh, all of us gain a lot of knowledge in this year. Thank you. Okay, great. And if I remember well, you're but by located the way, uh, in Egypt. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm located in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, I think my my lead mentor currently will be uh, engineer Mark White. Thank you. Wow. Well, okay, we'll see how things uh, things evolve because uh, multiplying mentors, I, I did not manage to get uh, that. Uh, who okay. else do we have? Oh, here I see Adrian. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So my name is Adrian. I've been in the Jenkins community for past uh, 10 years or more, even more now. Um, I've been um, maintaining plugins. Um, I've been uh, helping uh, people use plugins and uh, Jenkins instances for uh, more than more than 10 years. And now I'm working um, almost full time on uh, the plugin as scoring project. And that's why I'm mentoring, I'm proposing to mentor two ideas on that subject, uh, which we had discussed on Tuesday. So I won't maybe not repeat myself, but come, come back there. Okay, good. Uh, we have Chris, we have a lot of mentors, so I need to check the, the clock here that we don't go overboard. Chris is org admin. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, yep. Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Stern. So I'm based in Hong Kong. And uh, I'm one of the mentors for the build, um, building Jenkins start out with alternative tools project. And uh, I've been involved with GSOC with Jenkins for about like for I think for for more than a year. And um, I was also a mentor and I can mean philosophy as well. And uh, let me think. So I have been the maintainer for some Jenkins plugins. Um, two of them. One is GitLab, and the other one is Build Timeout. And uh, in my spare time, I like to code. Um, nice to meet everyone here. Okay, great. Now, who else is mentor and that I missed? Jake. I suppose I'm here, Jean-Marc. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name <laughs> Hi, is Jake. Jake. Um, I work closely with Adrian uh, on the Plug-in Health Scoring Project. Uh, I was a mentor last year on that. Excited to bring those projects forward this year. Excited to see the contributions there. Um, Jenkins has, well, I've been working with Jenkins for the last two years. I think it's consumed my life. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, working with all of you. <laughs> continue like that either you're losing your hair or you get all white and gray yeah i'm getting so. some gray ones i'm, I'm, I'm catching <laughs> up to you <laughs> okay great who else is a mentor candidate or, or mentoring rajiv uh rajiv okay yes go ahead yeah uh, hello everyone so this is rajiv i'm a software engineer i graduated last year so I was a GSOC student with uh, Captain Project, and I think this is a time to contribute back to the community and mentor some people. So even the last year, my, okay, so I'm mentoring for the project uh, building Jenkins IO with alternative tools. And I think that uh, why I choose this uh, idea because last year, my um, I, my idea was creating a doc engine for Captain. And this is like similar to, uh, almost similar to that project. And yeah, I'm happy to part of Jenkins uh, org, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Rajiv. First time I see you on, on screen, so yeah, okay. <laughs> this happens, I can't be uh, everywhere. Is there another mentor? Yep, we um, do. Yeah. I'll... Okay. Okay, yeah. So this is Logi. So uh, I'm a potential mentor for the uh, exponential back-off and Chitaho agent reconnection this year. 
and uh, I am a former GSOC student from 2020. So I know uh, how students are struggling to get into this uh, GSOC at first. And uh, so I'm here to help and uh, learn with them. And uh, yeah, happy to see you all. I can see some known faces. Yeah. It's great Good. to meet you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Logi, you're, you're based where? Uh, I'm based uh, in Sri Lanka, like Sri Lanka. Lanka. Okay, now I know here. I I have a poor memory, and now the, I I start connecting the dots. Great, great. Yeah. Okay, did mm -hmm. I miss somebody else? Otherwise, we're going to I I leave ten seconds blank, and then we'll jump into the technical subjects. Okay. So thank you everybody for joining as uh, mentors and especially as uh, contributors and people interested uh, in Google Summer of Code and in, uh, in Jenkins. So thank you very much for, for that. And it's a good choice uh, to be here. So we'll start with the first project idea of uh, today. The plugin installation man, uh, manager tool improvements. I think, Mark, you're going to present that one. I am. So if you're okay with it, John, Mark, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and, and use that as a framework for the discussion. That way people will have a record of where we went, etc. So the, uh, the, let's first do it, an introduction. What is the plugin installation manager tool? What it is, is a Google Summer of Code project from 2019. In 2019, we had this idea that we would really like to be able to replace the replace or duplicate the features that are included in the Jenkins plugin manager inside the Jenkins product itself, inside the Jenkins war file. We wanted to duplicate that outside of Jenkins with all the capabilities it had correct management of dependencies, correct handling of, of various things, of version safety for Jenkins versions. And in 2019, that was implemented as a Google Summer of Code project. And like many things in the software world, it was useful, helpful, valuable, but still many, many things that could be done to improve it. And the idea here with this project idea is to invite you to review the issues, review the proposed enhancements, and suggest what you think would be ones you would like to attack, you would like to do as part of a Google Summer of Code project. You will need to learn more about Plugin Installation Manager. You'll need to learn more about how Jenkins does plugins, right? There are concepts associated with Jenkins plugins which are rather different than other dependencies. And so you'll you'll learn a, a number of things as you investigate this, propose, make your proposal, prepare ideas, etc. So if we look at the issue tracker, and let's just look for now at enhancements. So there are actually some bugs that may also be be good things for you to consider. But for example, here's here's right at the very top generate a plugins lock file from a list of plugins. So what this user is suggesting is they would like a way for the plugin installation manager tool to generate a prototype of its own configuration file based on existing directory. And it almost does it, but not quite. And almost is not enough. So this, this is one idea that might be included in a, in a proposal. Now, that's just one of many. And so there are lots of other ideas like, okay, let's retain the comments in the source file when we write an output as a destination. Sometimes I write things in my plugins.txt file which matter to me. And those things that I write, I don't want to lose. But when doing this round trip technique, I may lose those, those comments. So this is again an, an interesting and useful suggestion, what to do with plugin installation manager tool, how to improve it. Proxy support is, is sort of a, a, 
a strong request from many people because many times they're sitting behind someone's corporate configuration and that corporate configuration requires specialized proxy variables or specialized proxy username and password or, or some other novel or exotic thing. Each of those things could be a very, very interesting and useful addition to, to the plugin installation manager tool. Um, as another example, okay, this one is one that I like because I spend a lot of time in Maven. Uh, add a facility to take a POM file as input to the tool. So hmm. today, what we have is we have, we have, excuse me. <laughs> Okay, I successfully coughed without coughing in all of your ears. I'm proud. That's great. All right. So today we have several different input formats. I can use a simple ASCII text file, a simple text file that uses specifically formatted lines. I can use a YAML file with specific data formats. What this is suggesting is, hey, give another idea of a way to, to use a this input format, Maven, to do a proposal for, I want this plugin, I want this plugin. Now there's some, there's some challenges hiding here, as with any of these. A Jenkins plugin has an artifact ID, but really the group ID, I'm not sure how relevant that is in this case, because Jenkins itself doesn't honor. So, so interesting challenges here and useful things that would be added to the plugin installation manager tool. Now, I've talked already probably more than I should have. Are there any specific questions that any of the anyone wants to ask that we might dive into specific questions around plugin installation manager tool? I, I have one question uh, just to introduce them. Uh, this, this project is uh, with, with several elements in so. Uh, what is the advice you could give uh, to uh, contributors that would work on there? How should they handle their proposal? What would you expect to see in their proposal? So what I would expect is a first an outline. Let's let's bring it up so that we've got an outline in their proposal that says, "Hey, I I am going to do this thing," and describing that I'm going to do improve the features of the plugin installation manager. And so they say, and then they describe which features they selected saying, I think we should choose this one and then this one and then this one and then this one. And their choices should likely be given based on, I think this is a good easy one to start and this one's more challenging and this one's very challenging. And what that hints is they've done a little bit of exploration to understand something about each of those issues. Now, some of them may say, they may say, I looked at this issue. It was so easy while I was looking at it. I just solved it and submitted the pull request. Okay, good practice. And we have several like that. If we look, there's an open pull request right now. Show security warnings by default. This one was a potential Google Summer of Code contributor who said, I want to try something and started the pull request. And I reviewed it, gave some comments, asked for some changes. The changes have come back. And now I've got to do another review. Uh, that's what I get for taking time off. Uh, so that is one way to you look at the issue list, consider which ones are interesting, include those in the proposal, and prioritize them based on your perception of preferably, hey, this would be a good one to get started. This one would be a good one to, to be sure that I understand it. This one would be a good one that's more difficult. And then maybe two or three at the end, which say, and here are some alternates in case one of these gets solved in the interim. And it really show that uh, the substance of the issue was understood and that you come already with, I, I will tackle it that way, that way. This is the danger zone or the things that are unclear. So it's not just listening, 
issue one, issue two, issue three, it's really discussing uh, the issue and come with a plan. Is is that what Correct. you have in mind? It is. Well, and and one of the things that I, as an evaluator of propo of project proposals, will be doing is I'm looking for the technical technical content of the proposal that tells me that the person has done the research to be able to show that they can be successful doing this. So I acknowledge this is this is real work. And in fact, the nice thing about it is for the Jenkins project, as you do this real work, you're actually helping the project. Even if ultimately you were not selected, the things you've done, the research you've done, the investigation, the study will have helped us move these things forward in some way. Okay. Great, thank you for for your uh, your lights shedding light on on this. Are there questions from the audience about uh, this project? Now, this one tool of, is widely used. It, it it is okay, and so that John Mark, I think that's worth noting why why this matters to me and why it matters to the Jenkins project. So. The plugin installation manager tool is used very, very widely because, among other things, it's bundled into the Jenkins container images. So when a exactly. Jenkins controller at company XYZ is configured to use Docker, they will typically configure it to use a very specific set of plugins. And the reason they can do that is because of this tool. So it's quite important to us that we not break this tool that we not do it, do damage to it in ways that would be incompatible with its previous usage. So we have to be conscious of and aware of compatibility. Great. Somebody in the audience has questions? It is also possible to ask questions uh, through the Gitter, the main Gitter channel, there's no specific channel yet for this project. Uh, so use the main uh, Google Summer of Code SIG or use community.jenkins.io, which has a lot of benefit right. of using. So we have two more minutes for that project. So we're waiting for questions. So, so okay, well, in those two minutes, I have to have to highlight a way that Chris and I did it. Chris and I, Chris Stern and I, as part of a documentation office hours some weeks or months ago, actually went through the list of, of enhancements and we gathered ideas that we thought were interesting into this page. By all means, you can use our work where we thought these were interesting, right? By all means, use those as suggestions. One of them is already in progress. But the others, I think, have plenty of things that, plenty of opportunity for, for ways to choose these and have them be positive. Oh, I saw Mohammed. Oh, Mohammed, what's Please. your question? Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm Mohammed from Egypt. <laughs> okay. I have a small question as uh, it's my first time to uh, join this. Google Summer of Code. Uh, should my proposal uh, contains all this feature or I can uh, pick one or more from these features? Very good question. So so the way I interpret your question is, should you should your proposal include this entire list? If it did, I would discount your proposal as not having not being a realistic proposal. I don't expect any Google Summer of Code project could implement this entire list. There's just too much work hiding in those things. So you'll have to choose a subset or even items that may not be on this list. Your exploration will help you decide which items from this you should choose as part of the subset. Some of them are personally interesting to me. Plug-in version caching for container builds because I don't know how to do it. It's a, 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 an interesting challenge. Uh, error reporting, probably an easy one to do, those kinds of things. So, Mohammed, did that answer your question? Yeah. 
it's good because I work from three years and uh, I believe that I can't finish all this feature in the target <laughs> hours in Google Summer of Code. Uh, I want to be realistic. Very good. Well, and, and you make a good point. Our initial proposal for this was that it would be a 175 hour project. And 175 hours, while that may sound like a lot in terms of the working world, that's only four weeks of full time work in the United States at 40 hours a week. Yes. So it's actually not as much time as you might think. Over a summer, it's about 20 hours a week for three months. But uh -huh. it's not. This is not a huge amount of time, so you will have to choose a subset. Don't forget that there is documentation that's required. There are some meetings, uh, there are discussions. So, uh, well, it, 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 testing, you to think about it. writing yeah, testing, tests, yes. uh, right. doing code reviews from other people's proposals. Yeah, there are all sorts of things that that will make make the that will fill the time for the Google Summer of Code project certainly. So definitely choose only a subset of those ideas and choose the ones that you think would be most valuable. Part of that learning process, reading the issue descriptions, trying to understand them, exploring, experimenting with it will help you understand how people use this tool now and why they would care about these different things. Why would they want increased logging for debug and diagnosis. And then you read some, some comments from people behind odd firewalls and, oh, that's why, those kind of things. John Mark, I'm sorry, okay. I've gone over your time boundary. A, a, little, a little bit, but uh, we, we have a little bit buffer because these are general uh, questions. So I propose that we stop now discussing that. If we have time over at the end of this session, we can uh, open it to all projects. So the next one is building Jenkins IO with uh, better tools. Who's going to talk about that one? Um, Chris. I... Yeah. yeah, Chris, that'd be great. Go ahead. Great, right. go ahead. Cool. And so, do you want me uh, to stop sharing, Chris, so that you can share, or are you okay if I navigate? Oh, you, you can share your screen, yeah. It's, I'm just going to look at this page anyways. It's like, um, let's see. So let's maybe uh, go to, um, yeah, that, that's good. That's good. That one is good. So uh, for this project, um, the main purpose is to replace all strength, which is the tool we're using to build ASCII dogs, sources, uh, from Hamble templates and the Hamble data files. So uh, one of the tools we are considering using for this project, it's called Entora. But uh, the thing with Entora is that it's, um, the backend part is quite easy. The hard part is for the front end. So it's like uh, to make it look like, to, to make the site look like what we have now for Jenkins.io, it may take a while to, uh, to get the, um, the layout and the visuals are uh, like really perfect. And uh, maybe maybe we should go to the GitHub issue 5474. So if we head to that issue, we should be able to see if we um, if it scroll down a bit to I think to mm, a bit down there right here. So we see uh, if you look at the four links provided by is Basil. Um, these are the prototypes for what he has tried before. To um, so essentially, what Basil did was uh, he spent, I think, according to what he told us a while back, before he spent a couple of hours during lunchtime to come up with a prototype uh, just for user handbook alone. If my memory is accurate, but um, we can see here. Uh, besides user handbook, we also have docs site. Yep, that one. Oops, so that, did I open yeah. the wrong? Oh yes, okay, right. That's the right one, but it's like um, that. That's the one that's not rendered. That's the source code. So if we look at this one, we uh, and maybe oh yeah, 
That's kind of like a, you can say, hey, move out here. Yeah, uh, yeah, move out here. Uh, but um, if we go back to uh, maybe, uh, so I think it's, uh, let's try this one. All right. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I'm are you trying to show the, the render yeah. as versions? Rendering. Because here's, here's mm, render really. as versions. This is yes. stable 2361 and here's master. Yeah, but I'm I'm trying to go to um maybe we should go to the source code to okay. Majos to Majos to uh back to oh. what you had before. Not this one. Just this the one. one. Yeah. yeah, this to Majos. Okay. Ah, got it. Yeah. So it's like uh these are what we have currently on the Jenkins Star website. But if we click on I think if we click on one of these, say uh Blue Ocean. And we go to, uh, yep. We should be able to see like all these files are A docs, which means that they're ASCII docs. So if we go back to say, um, maybe go back to, uh, let me think. So modules and root. Let's see what they have there. So we can see a uh, like a docs again, pages again, because like, um, and maybe we should go to pages, yeah, and a docs. So basically, like for the new version of the website, it will be all in a docs, and maybe possibly YAML files, but no YAML files, as we currently have now. Because like, uh, I think it's because like Austrac uses Ruby and Ruby. It uh, uses ham ham files as template, but um, that will no longer be the case here. I'm saying this is uh, I'm saying this because like someone did mention, did ask about this um, on Gitter before. Mm -hmm. So um, that and and it's like if we go back to the project idea page. Yeah, if we go uh, to let's say, I think it's um, quick start. So that's a section called page content sources. So if we look at this, so what we're going to keep is ASCII docs, web components, but maybe no Hamo or Ruby. And so, so Chris, one of the challenges there, so that's that's focused intentionally on the user handbook right where the user handbook yeah. we think can be generated without needing the custom custom things that are in the Hamel file whereas yeah. developer handbook i know is dependent on it and security advisories these all depend on it so so it's effectively this project is not just a generate the site using antora it's separate the site into more more broadly separated components where user handbook becomes its own component and is version specific yep. but the others don't right so so this this is quite a for me a challenging project and a, a an interesting challenge in terms of uh how do you do this and how do you make sure that it works yeah true and also there's like uh this project can be split into three parts so originally it's planned for 175 hours, but it can be uh, it can be pushed to 352 depending on how the contributor is going to plan out like what scope, what the scope will be for the final product. So it could be, uh, but the most basic part we need to work on is the user documentation with versioning. And for the second part would be the developer documentation, the one you mentioned before, uh, which strongly depends on the handbook files as templates. But we have to, if if we're going to stick with Antor, we have to come up with a way to uh, to rebuild that as well. So we, as to remove the dependency on handbook files. And the third point is to build the block using Gatsby. So now would you be okay if, if, is there is there a is there a reason for Gatsby after developer do documentation with Antora? Is that because having previous experience with Antora, it's a logical thing to do the next thing with Antora? 
I think so. Yeah, that 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 was the plan originally, anyways. But um, the most important thing is to have the first part. So uh, the use right. of construction. The second part, it I think we we can we can have like uh the block two depends, um, but um, or the development the developer documentation that that is the, the ordering for the second and third is not as important. Great. And if we can go down to quick start. So for to start this project, it's recommended to find some good, first good issues in the Jenkins style repo. And to like, uh, yep. But I think like for now we we have like we still have some good first issues, so mm -hmm. it's like um maybe maybe we can open some more later on but it's like um but it's easy to spot where there might be some improvements to be done on the jenkins style website so we welcome any prs to improve the website as well so and, people um, understand the process yeah yeah yep so next be besides like uh submitting a good uh PR would be to explore the Jenkins ILO components repo. That that part is separate from the Jenkins ILO web, uh, repo because that like um, this repo is uh, for all the web components that we see um, that um, that includes the header, footer, and other components as well across different Jenkins ILO sides yeah so chris are you okay if i open up the example to show what this one yeah. is just so people yeah. are aware so sure. when i open up jenkins.io here's the page that's presented to me right this looks like a single unified site and when i click on documentation and go to one piece oh it's still the same top level header it still has the same footer on it now when i go to plugins Oh, hey, the header is slightly changed, but same content in the header and same content in the footer because it's using a web component for the header and the footer. And so, so the benefit of that header and footer technique is, and as we split this site, as this site becomes more and more components, so if blog eventually becomes generated from its own a uh, set of re repositories, its own tools, it will still have the same look and feel because of these top level web components. Okay, uh, Mark and Chris, I'm going to pause for a second because I need uh, to keep the things on, on, on the rails here. So thank you very much. Uh, before going to questions on that topic, uh, if contributors have specific questions and they don't feel uh, that it's not working efficiently to get the answer or to discuss ideas on Gitter or community.jenkins.io. Uh, you can also propose or request uh, to have dedicated project uh, online meetings where you can interactively discuss and explore, play, uh, with ideas. This can also be done, so we don't need to stay in this format. This is a general presentation. I can explain that uh, later in detail. So there's just an introduction. Every project uh, can handle that. Questions on this project idea? I see somebody in the chat. Okay, Rajiv is hinting to information. Don't forget to add that in the meeting notes. I lost track of the meeting notes here. Other questions? Don't be shy. Questions? No. Mark wanted to say something? No, no, just I think actually if there are no questions, well, I've certainly been pleased with the, the boldness and the creative creative 
genius applied by, for instance, Vandit and several others who are attending with us today have submitted pull requests to the Jenkins.io documentation site for things that I thought were really quite advanced. And, and so well done, that's great. My apologies that they're not yet reviewed and finally merged. Uh, Vandit, for instance, picked up the upgrade guide, which I thought was a major, huge challenge and has started a very nice work on it. So there are ways that you as Google Summer of Code candidates can learn things about the sites and also help the project. Great, well, wow. congratulations there, well done. Okay, we'll keep uh, a couple of minutes at the end of uh, this meeting for other questions. Let's move to the third project, uh, screenshot automation uh, for uh, Jenkins documentation, I think. This is one you've been pushing, Mark. Or... Sure, yeah, so the idea with this one is that when we have Jenkins user interface improvements, which happen quite regularly, and we had multiple major releases last year with Jenkins user interface improvements, those user, user interface improvements are not reflected in the Jenkins documentation. And so someone has to go through the Jenkins documentation and capture new screenshots. Now, screenshots, oddly enough, are a very common thing in user interface test automation. Tools like Selenium or Cypress uh, do navigate web pages and do perform screenshots of those, of those things. What this proposed was, hey, couldn't we take some form of description of the steps required to reach a particular UI, put that into the documentation as a comment, and then use those comments in that documentation to drive a tool that would capture the screenshots based on the latest Jenkins, Jenkins release. The idea is, hey, for the candidate who takes this project, they're developing some very useful skills in web browser automation. And web browser automation is a big deal in many locations. Uh, right. The Jenkins project benefits by getting up-to-date screenshots when those screenshots are taken. Now, Good. for me, oh, go ahead, John Mark. No, 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 I was going to wrap up, but do you have something to add? No. So this is a useful project. It would uh, help improve the documentation. And on top of that, this is about learning skills uh, that are useful in other open source projects, but also professional. Correct, right. You'll find, you'll find many, many companies that are choosing to use web browser automation as a way to test their web-centered products. That was a good sales pitch, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Any questions about this project? I think this one was clear, clear and easy to explain. We can dig more. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Am uh, I audible? Am I audible? Yes. Go ahead. Am I audible? Oh, there are two people talking uh, at the same time. So let's, uh, let's okay, I'm going on mute. Giri, yeah, Giri, I'm, going, I'm on. going to have you go first. Shashank will go, have you go second. Is that all right? So yeah. Giri, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Giri Dharan, and I am from India. And my question is, you could please tell me the current process for taking and updating screenshots in Denkin's documentation? Sure. The, the current process is we find the screenshots, we tell someone, please go recreate that in Jenkins and use a screenshot tool on your computer to take the screenshot and then submit it as a pull request to the, to the documentation. Kevin Martins had to do that. He's our Jenkins documentation officer and he did it three or four months ago. And it was it was a useful thing that he did, but it was not a terribly thoughtful thing that he did, right? It wasn't filled with was intellectual boring. activity. Okay, John Mark <laughs> said the word. It was boring, right? And automating things that are boring is a good thing to automate. 
So no did that answer your question, question Giri? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I want okay. to share an idea with uh, regarding the screenshot automation. Can I share that? You're, you're certainly welcome to. Um, Hello. Although I'm not sure this is the forum for ideas on implementation. Usually what you'd want to do is put those in your idea or discuss them in a chat channel. Okay. Thank you. So Shashank, I think you had a question. So before we let Giri continue, Shashank, what was your question? Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Shashank. So I have one question, like what is the scope of this project? Like, for example, one can be just take the screenshot and save it to a folder, like some resource slash image, or, or it can be like uh, taking the screenshot and updating it in the resources also. For example, if we change the version of the Jenkins in the, Jenkins.io, then image will automatically get fetched and it will uh, show up in the website. The right. first, this is my first question. Okay, and so so good, good, good question. So the Jenkins documentation <laughs> site is intentionally managed as a static site. Because it's a static site, that means we take the content from a repository, build it and deploy it as a site. So what we would want this thing to do is submit be, be usable to submit ultimately pull requests to the Jenkins documentation that say here are the images that are being updated now now that's fairly advanced and this project would not necessarily need to be the thing that submits the pull requests but it would need to place the image files in their correct locations in the documentation set for any image that it updates and so, Mark, I see also a link with the documentation project, the, the new version, versioned uh, documentation with Antora. Certainly, there might and, be and some absolutely. I, actually, that's a very good point because screenshots are clearly versioned representations, aren't they? Right. I mean, they are exactly versioned representations of something. <laughs> yeah, very, very good point. Thanks. So Shashank, did that answer your question or did I just use lots of words and not actually answer your question? Well, you answered my question, thank you. And the second question is the skill to study slash improvement it is written here, image comparison. Uh, can you please explain why this is required? Like image comparison can be so that we can render the web page fast, but for what? No, no, comparison? image comparison here is, I think the, the purpose for calling image comparison here is not for speed of rendering, but rather to decide if a change that has been generated is a relevant change or not. So conceivably, if a change was three pixels of color that changed and nothing else, it may not be relevant. And so an image comparison concept might be needed to say, hey, let's let's do something, let's choose that this is a significant change or an insignificant change. Uh, there's a, there's a, a UI automation tool, I think called Zikuli, that does something like this, where what it does is it takes pictures of your entire screen and then tries to apply image comparison techniques to decide if the reference screen and the new copy are actually relevantly different. So that's what I think it's trying to say when it's pointing to image comparison is that there could be some sophisticated techniques for comparing the two images and deciding this is a relevant update or no, there's not enough change in this one to be relevant for to actually justify a pull request to, to update the content. Did, okay. did that address your question? Oh uh, yeah. And my last question is, uh, in this documentation, you have mentioned for, uh, for the GIFs and videos, like currently we don't have them in our website, right? Okay, now I'm not sure I understood. I think you, uh, I lost some some sound there, uh, breakup. So you mentioned videos, and this thing is not focusing on attempting to do any any capture of videos. It would These would be static screenshots. Could you restate your question yeah, okay. so I'm sure that I understood? Yes. Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, sure. In the project details, first point, you can see that here it is written that may be extended to render a series of screenshot embedded as a GIF or MP4. Oh, I see. Okay. MP4. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, and and that so for me this so is this, this a would be part a of very this project brave extension? extension. That would be a very oh, very okay. brave extension because you're trying to say how do you decide how what what the steps should be in the the screenshot that is updated. This is a stretch goal. Right, very much a stretch goal. Okay. But you Thank could you. describe it and, and say how you would handle it, uh, what were what would be the, the, the advantages of doing that. You, you, you need to sell the idea and you're selling yourself uh, in a proposal. Okay. We have four minutes for other questions. On any project. Okay. Hello. Yeah, I'm audible. Pratham, uh, Pratham, you can go yes. ahead. Hello. So, like, I want to ask in this project, like, I get the idea of the like web browser automation. Sorry, Pratham, go ahead again, please. I didn't hear you. Hello. Like, I want to ask the okay, like the I have a query like in. In this particular project, like I get the idea of the web browser automation because currently I am doing the automation in my internship. So it's I know this thing, and I uh, my question is like, where do I start so that I can prove you like I know this thing so I can do it. So one way might be to to create outline what you think the human readable format should be. And okay. then show a little proof of concept that says, hey, this human readable format, and whether that's capybara, whether that's um, cucumber, what, whatever format you feel that is, should be, okay. here's this basic format, and here's how we would use it, here's how a user would do it. So what you're doing is then describing, here are some of the concepts that might be involved in doing this. Okay. And... Uh... I want like there is one more query like I am not new to this, and uh, I joined the the last week in the Jenkins. So should I like okay focus on this to make like okay like approach how to approach like this project or uh, should I like uh, okay contribute to like issues currently like issues like new issues in the Jenkins the main project? You're you're going to need both. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the the bigger challenge for me is assuring that that your project idea is solid because your project idea okay. will be evaluated by the by the potential mentors and we will read okay. your project idea you need to be yeah. sure that that is reviewed and discussed in the group that okay. it's publicly visible etc all the good guidance that john mark has offered okay so like i have to be active on the both sides yeah yeah yes yeah. so, okay. well so so absolutely, you'll need to show skills in both areas. Your okay. project idea will be the the most crucial. But if you have not been active in other areas, okay. reviewers you like me are unlikely to be persuaded that you have the skills you need. Okay, okay, okay. Get my answer. Thank you. We have a question from Mohammed. I don't want it to get lost. Go ahead, Mohammed. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I didn't raise any PR on drinking GitHub. So uh, is it mandatory to be approved, or I just raise one PR which help a mentor to see my code? So, so is it mandatory? No. Uh, it, it certainly is not mandatory. The the GitHub the the Google Summer of Code Good rules so don't require any such thing. Is it very wise to show those of us who are evaluating your project idea that you are involved enough in the community to know how to submit a pull request, to know how to respond to feedback, to know how to get that pull request revised so that it finally is merged? Yes, those are important skills because the project's success ultimately will depend in part on your ability to, to do those kinds of things. John Mark, did I say it well enough? Yes, uh, very, very wisely. So it's not required, 
but if you have that, it will help uh, for you to have a strong case so that the mentor will not have to spend time to explain and coach you on basic things and lose time uh, on uh, on that. Right. Yeah. The, for me, the, the, there is so much benefit to every one of you learning how the workflow operates to submit a pull request, to receive feedback, to up, up respond to that feedback, to get that pull request all the way to merged. That is so important for you and will be so important for you in your career that it's worth doing that no matter what else. Okay, we're at the top of the hour. I'm sorry for people that might ha still have questions. Don't hesitate to ask them in the regular channels, the Gitter, GSOC, SIG channel, and on community.jenkins.io. Uh, uh, and we can see how to move forward. Uh, we meet again on Tuesday to discuss other uh, projects, uh, the agent reconnection and the GitLab uh, improvements, GitLab plugin improvements will be discussed on Tuesday and the rest of the projects will be discussed uh, same day next week. And then I think we, we covered uh, most uh, of the projects. Uh, I thank everybody some of you, it has been very late uh, in the time, uh, a time of the day, or very, very early uh, because they're on the West Coast of the United States. So thank you everybody to, uh, to have joined. Thank you for the questions and the energy uh, that's behind that. I'm looking forward uh, for a, a great summer uh, together. Thank you very much and uh, see you Thank online you, or uh, here in this meeting later. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, John-Mark. Thank you. Thank you, John-Mark. Thank you. Bye-bye.